So a lot of people have been asking me to do a video about my predictions for the upcoming Baki vs. Kengen crossover anime event. So far as we're currently aware, it looks like the crossover will feature interactions between similar characters like Julius and Oliva, Muteba and Gaia, and Adam and Chiharu, but I believe the only actual fights, at least the main fights, will be Hanayama vs. Sawpang, Jack vs. Ryan, and of course Baki vs. Oma. Moving forward, I want to outline two specific things. One, this entire crossover event is being done in the Baki anime illustration style, Baki anime animation, and sound design, and the fights are taking place in the Korakuen, this could either be a major home field advantage for the Baki cast, or it could be a reason to give the Kengen cast more leeway, since, at the end of the day, this is supposed to be an awesome martial arts anime crossover that fans of either series, many of whom are fans of both, can enjoy watching some of their favorite martial artists and fighters from completely different series that would normally never meet in any official capacity fight like in some kind of fan-made crossover but with the production value of a Netflix special. That said, let's get to my prediction for the first fight. Now I know it goes without saying that there are some people that think that Kengen is massively stronger than Baki, some that think that Baki is insanely stronger than Kengen, and some that think that the two series are relative to each other. Full disclosure, let me make this abundantly clear that, for the most part, I think Baki would smash Kengen. I can feel the disturbance in the force from all the people that just clicked off. But it would also maybe be disingenuous of me not to disclose any biases or conflicts of interest before the predictions. That way, Kengen fanboys, as opposed to the normal Kengen enjoyers, can call me a Baki wanker if I don't predict their way, and if I'm wrong about my predictions, I can just blame my bias. Alright, first up, Hanayama vs. Saw Pang. Now, here we have two characters that hit like a fucking truck and can take just as good as they give. Readers of the Baki manga, especially the Hanayama Gaidens, should be well aware of how ridiculously strong Hanayama is even in early Baki, but temper your expectations because this crossover is 100% absolutely verse equalized, meaning that if the series weren't relative to each other before, they certainly will be for this crossover. Nobody's blitzing unless it's like Rei or someone else that can blitz most of their own verse. Nobody's one-shotting someone else unless it's like Yujiro Hanma to Chiharu Difference or Shen to Kanada, etc, etc. That said, let's talk about Hanayama's kit, Sawpang's moveset, and then how I think the fight would go and why. So for the lesser seen moves that Hanayama's really only ever used once, moves we're less likely to see in the crossover, we have Pinching with his insane grip strength, Headbutts, a move he only used once against Baki in the kid arc, the Roll Kick, a Baki classic technique that Hanayama used to clear the entirety of the Korakuen arena at the start of his match with Katsumi and land a decisive, powerful first blow. And of course, Tamashi Wari, a traditional martial arts move used in demonstrations to break bricks and boards first used against Hanayama by Spec. We'll talk about how the fight could go with those moves involved, but first, what's his common move pool, his techniques that we're likely to see. Well, we have the Feint, a move he used a couple times in the series which helps with his extremely linear and predictable attack pattern. And of course we have his two signature moves, the Vice Grip that applies his nearly peerless grip strength to a person to the point of bursting the skin and muscle that he grabs, and the Destructive Force Punch, or the Yakuza Punch, a punch that multiplies his immeasurable grip strength times his body weight of 366 pounds, times the speed of him swinging around like he's pitching a fastball to generate enough destructive force in his punch to be equated to a cannon. Specifically, just the sheer pressure of having that punch target you was once equated to standing in front of a cannon that you know has had its fuse lit, but you can't see how much of the fuse is left. Those moves, when combined with his overwhelming resolve and endurance, make him one of the heaviest hitters in all of Baki. What about Saw Pang? Well, Saw Pang is basically the opposite side of the same coin. Also one of the most durable fighters in his verse through the bone conditionings he's done for Lethway, his martial arts style, and his unconquerable spirit, but where Hanayama is an unshakable stoic with a steely determination, Saw Pang has a howling spirit and a burning hot passion. Moreover, while Hanayama is incredibly tough and strong-willed, he isn't trained in any martial arts, having accrued his fighting skill through street fights. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that Hanayama is totally devoid of martial skill, but it's basically fact that he primarily relies on his brute strength and indomitable willpower. Saw Pang, on the other hand, is traditionally trained in one of the most brutal martial arts in the world, Lethway, a Burmese martial art that essentially boils down to Muay Thai, but with headbutts. Hanayama's flesh and bones will one day be compared to a suit of armor, 
but Sawpank's skeleton, particularly his skull, has achieved this same level of resistance as well, and having extremely high level kickboxing skills with his left way, and more means of attack with his elbows, knees, clinch skills, and headbutts than Hanayama with solely punches, kicks, and standard non-trained grappling means that... While I'd likely give the attack strength advantage to Hanayama in regards to just straight blasting, though it evens out with Sapeng's Hammer of Burma, a headbutt technique where Sapeng uses his steel-like skull to headbutt for immense destructive output, and with the fact that the two likely have comparable durability and grit, Sawpang will have a clear, distinct skill advantage. That alone isn't a deciding factor, however, as even Katsumi, an extremely skilled kickboxer-styled martial artist in his own right, would have lost to Hanayama three times over had it not been for Hanayama's chivalrous code of ethics to not hit a man while he's down, despite Katsumi's expertise in karate. With both fighters' stats and abilities laid out, that's a good segue to get to the fight prediction. While Hanayama's pinching would be particularly effective against Saw Pang, since it's an attack to the skin and flesh without attacking the bone, Vice Grip would be absolutely devastating for the same reason. The Roll Kick would be a good way to seize the initiative and start with a lot of pressure. The idea of Tamashiwari is similar to how Rei defeated Saw Pang in the Annihilation Tournament. Fainting will help Hanayama to bridge the gap between Saw Pang's evasive and predictive skills and his predictable strikes. Headbutts could help him trade with non Hammer of Burma headbutts, and the Destructive Force Punch, much like a punch version of the Hammer of Burma, is probably one of the few techniques that could break through Sawpang's conditioning and rock him, due to the fact that Hanayama has repeatedly shown to value his code of ethics over winning the match, with him typically wanting to fight in turns if possible and never attacking a man when he's down, I think Sawpang is gonna win their fight. While Karo Yoshinari is less skilled in fighting than Hanayama, likely not as durable or spirited, and definitely not as blessed with grip strength, I see the fight going similarly to that. Even Vice Grip, Hanayama's signature move and best tool in this fight, potentially gets countered by Hammer of Burma, as Sa Peng could just use it if Hanayama grips him to Vice Grip, and Hanayama, who has a code against dodging or evading moves, would take it right to the face, inevitably doing significant damage. I think the fight will be a mid-diff victory for Sawpang as well, since he rivals Hanayama in will and fortitude, but eclipses him in skill, and Hanayama of course fights adhering to his ethics. Next we have Jack versus Ryan. Now this is basically the opposite of Hanayama versus Sawpang. Jack is the one who's more of a martial artist, as, while he hasn't developed Goto at this point, he is a high-level pit fighter, which is basically no-rules boxing with kicks allowed but not often used, as fights typically took place in mud pits where fighters were prone to slip. And Ryan, while being a Kurei-style prodigy, doesn't use Kurei-style martial arts at this point in his life. Since Ryan is all about brute strength and durability, whereas Jack is an all-rounder of brute strength, skill, and determination, this one will really be a matter of who can deal the most damage fast enough while taking as little damage in return. Jack has feints to get in shots typically avoided, but it's more Ryan's style to just tank them and counter with heavy pressure to dominate, so Jack would likely rely on more power techniques, stuff like his chop blow for a massive hit, a nukite to pierce Ryan's tough skin and thick muscles, Aiki to counter Ryan's brute force offensive, though it's likely that, while not using martial arts himself, Ryan would still use his martial arts knowledge to attempt to counter some of the more stonewall techniques like Aiki the Spear Tackler Suplex to ground Ryan if he lays on too much forward pressure, and the Ollie Jr. finishing stomp to finish the fight if it does end up on the ground. There's also the added pressure of Jack's bite, and especially his Lion Dance being a potentially one-hit lethal move to worry about, or at least a complete game-changer if he debilitates Ryan. So, how do I think the fight's gonna go? Well, this one's a tougher one, but no matter how it falls, it's gonna be an extreme diff fight. Ultimately, I think it's going to be a no-diff fight in Jack's favor due to his reach advantage and skill difference along with Jack's strength and resolve, until Ryan inevitably uses removal, at which point the fight either ends in a draw due to Ryan's winning but collapsing due to injury sustained, or Ryan wins narrowly. Unfortunately, Hanayama and Jack have a record of losing often in Baki, particularly they have a less than impressive win-loss ratio, but they're still respected and loved because they always put up a good fight and always give an interesting show. 
The one factor that keeps me weary about Jack vs. Ryan, though, is that there are a couple of panels of what they've shown that looks as though Jack is maxing, the transformation we saw him undergo while fighting Baki in the final round of the Maximum Tournament. While that shouldn't be possible to my understanding, as the transformation is caused by Jack overdosing on X4, his most potent steroid, and Jack's Hanma blood had adapted to X4 to make him weaker than he was while overdosing, but ultimately significantly stronger than he was before, and permanently so, as opposed to the temporary boost from overdosing, if he is indeed somehow maxing again, then Jack will probably be no diffing Ryan, Ryan will removal and trounce Jack, but then Jack maxes and wins? Maybe? It really all depends on who transforms first if that's the case, they would lose. Now for the main event of the evening, Baki vs. Oma. Being that this is the climax of the crossover and main character vs. main character, this fight was always going to be extreme diff no matter what. In the same way that Baki vs. Yujiro was an extreme diff loss for Baki, and Oma vs. Kuroki was an extreme diff loss for Oma, the conclusion here has to be equally as exciting and compelling, with everyone on the edge of their seats guessing who's gonna win between the main character of their favorite martial art anime or animes. Each fighter has a comprehensive style, a massive pool of moves, tons of fight experience, be it real fights or mental ones, and both fighters have an extremely powerful transformation. As for who's gonna win, well, I believe that they'll either use the final fight to break the 1-1 draw, or use the first two wins to soften the blow of the final loss, in which case the winner would be Baki. First off, I personally think that there's no possibility of a three-fight sweep. Even if it was an exhibition that would run all three fights regardless of the score, the losing side's fans would be fuming and probably rating Bomb the Special because y'all are a bunch of children. As for why I think Baki wins the last fight, first, Baki has more experience. This is only Oma halfway through, maybe finished with his first major martial arts tournament, whereas Baki at this point has been through the Kid arc, he won the Maximum Tournament, he defeated two Death Row inmates at once, he helped his team win the Raitai Tournament, he basically one-shot Ali Jr. twice in a row, an incredibly powerful fighter that rivaled his own stats and skills, he basically defeated Pickle, one of two of the physically strongest fighters in the verse, and he fought Yujiro Hanma, the most skilled martial artist in the verse and indisputably one of the most skilled martial artists in fiction, to the point of being acknowledged as a potential rival. This Baki has 30 years worth of manga chapters of experience under his belt. Oma has like five at most. Baki has just about every move that Oma has to a degree, like Gotai Jutsu for Iron Breaker, Aiki and Yawara for Weeping Willow, Cockroach Dash for Raging Fire, Bow and Arrow to Water Dragon's Vein, and so on and so forth, and he's got plenty of moves that Oma just doesn't have an answer for. Baki at this point in the series has fought thousands of the best martial artists of every conceivable style in the world and won, his techniques are flawless, his fundamentals are perfect, and in some instances, such as Oma's flame caught a footwork and how it generates after images and such, Baki doesn't even need a technique to replicate. His natural movements and footwork are so precise, Pickle genuinely believed his attacks were phasing through Baki. Even a heavily weakened Baki could manage the same thing against Yuocho, a man skilled enough to be the favored candidate for becoming the next Kaio, and someone talented enough to replicate Retsu's own stone carving feat, a feat that had many consider him as one of the strongest Kempo practitioners ever. Later in the series, Baki's footwork is so impressive that he can dodge people's lines of sight instinctively, like multiple people at once. Even the gap in their transformations is ridiculous. Oma's advance slowly kills him if he tries to use it too often or with too high an output, makes it so that he can't use the Nico style depending on the version of Oma they're using, and still only makes him about three times stronger and faster. At this point, Baki's demon back and demon brain are things he can just activate on command, he can use them as much as he wants however much he wants with no downside or ill effect, he can still use all of his martial arts and abilities, including Death Concentration, which is basically Fallen Demon, but with no schizo downside, basically giving Baki a more busted version of Divine Demon. And even after all that, while the exact boost is unknown in the canon, Retsu claims that just Baki awakening his Hanma blood makes him two times stronger, though this was only said in the anime and not in the manga. His kicks just doubled in force. So we're talking about a potential four times boost from Demon Back, double the boost of just awakening his Hanma blood, 
or at the very least a boost large enough to go from being stomped by Yujiro to putting up a respectable, nearly even fight. And that's without even considering Demon Brain, as we honestly don't even really know what it does, or whether or not it's something that's activated, like Demon Back, or if it's just always passively been active. Regardless, that's also not even taking into consideration the amps Baki gets from Endorphins, the fact that Baki was once choked to death and willed himself back to life, or some of the devastating techniques Baki knows, like the Cord Cut, Mock Punch, Whip Strike, Hand Pocket, Toe use, and of course one of the most powerful tools in his arsenal, the 0.5 second unconscious technique. All in all, we're talking about a Baki that Oma probably wouldn't even defeat in the manga right now. So while it'll be a fantastic nail-biting fight with some great moments for both characters and definitely a close race, all my money is on Baki. Alright, so those are my predictions. Saw Peng wins, round 2 is either a draw or Ryan wins unless Maxing is somehow back, and Baki takes round 3. Having the three fights somehow end as one win, one draw, one loss is most likely, and makes everyone happy, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens on June 6th. Thank you all so much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video or if you're hyped for the crossover, or leave a like if you disagree with me as you likely already have. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with me and why, if you agree with me, or what, if anything, you're hyped to see in the crossover. Even just interactions like potentially Yujiro and Agito, or Kuroki and Dopo or whatever. Subscribe if you enjoy Kengen and Baki content, or if you enjoy Baki vs Kengen, as I've had a Baki vs Kengen series running on my channel for a couple of years now and Netflix really just stole my whole shit. Alright, I'll see you guys next time, hopefully with all my predictions having been wrong so that the comments of this video get blasted with, this aged poorly, so I can get an algorithm boost. Peace!